I'm here to talk about Bupkis. I, I will promote Clone <laughs> High because I'm, I'm a diehard fan, but I'm, I'm mostly here to talk to you about Bupkis. <laughs> I appreciate uh, your show thus far, uh, having a good time. Um, I First off, I love how every episode has the disclaimer of like, this is inspired by real people, but not everything and everyone is real. Um, and is that is that like, you know, are you trying not to get sued? Are there, are there real people you feel will be offended by not real oh, things? Oh, no. I mean, yeah, it's that's purely just legal. That's just a <laughs> legal directive that we've been given that we must do this. Uh, but I'm so, Pete and I are very excited about getting Stacey Keach to, uh, to voice our, our legal disclaimer because it, it has an absurd quality to it. There's like a weird bell that rings at the end that almost sounds like it would be like at the beginning of The Exorcist or something that like that, oh, <laughs> that always makes me laugh. Uh, I think it weirdly like sets the tone uh, mm -hmm. for what's to come for some of the absurdity that's to come. Exactly. It really tells you that you're about to see witness the unbelievable. Um, yeah. <laughs> how long has the show been in process and were you on it with Pete from the start? Did he come to you first? Yeah. How did this unravel? Yeah, I mean, it's funny. Pete texted me the other day. He's like, can you believe it's been three years since we first started writing Buffkiss? And it's like, it doesn't feel like it's been that long. Um, I met Pete on the movie The King of Staten Island. Mm -hmm. And we, Pete, I met Pete and Dave Cyrus on the movie. And we just gravitated to each other. We have very similar comic sensibilities. We became fast friends. And it was during the height of the pandemic that Pete texted me and was like, hey, do you want to write a show? And I was like, yeah, of, of course I do. And uh, mm -hmm. we just we just started writing the show in a vacuum of the pandemic. And we had no idea where it was going to end up, if it was ever going to see the light of day. But I think that the kind of sense of playfulness, mm -hmm. the erratic shifting tone uh, that happened, some of the boundless nature of the show, I think is because we wrote it ourselves and it was really just whatever made us laugh the hardest was our was our guiding principle on how to make this show yeah i was gonna say like i really feel it kind of has like like the combination of just like it couldn't possibly have been made decades ago right but at the same time it does have that feel of like a show about nothing like seinfeld or um the family show like everybody loves raven kind of thing um yeah. so i love how you kind of combine i don't know what the, the classic and the very new i suppose what are your guiding lights for each episode like in terms of structure you know i it was really just a it, within each episode and within a lot of our with all of our character arcs there is an element of truthfulness to mm -hmm. pete's real life and i think even though we sometimes heighten and exaggerate certain aspects of things there is a truthfulness to uh what these characters and what these family dynamics are going through that i i think makes the show very relatable no matter who you are, whether you're a world famous comedian or not, struggling with some of the very specific things that Pete is struggling with in this show, um, there is a you know very true uh, core that I think makes for the very emotional storytelling that I think some people might find surprising, given like how irreverent like the the pilot episode is some of the places that we go absolutely. I mean, even episode three, I think actually I'm lying, episode two and three both. I was like, oh my god. Why am I so emotional now? <laughs> I thought I was going to be laughing. Right. Um, the cast is a bananas. Yes. Um, <laughs> so from guest stars cameoing as themselves to just like who you have as family members is yeah. wild. Were there people that from the start, you and Pete were like, the, they have to be on it. We just have to have them. Or were there just like delightful surprises along the way? I, I mean, like every, this is, I like to say that in some ways I describe this show as like a fever dream of what it's like to be in Pete's orbit. Cause it is sort of like an absurd fever dream. And our casting felt like a wonderful fever dream because it was like everyone that Pete dreamt up, like the people would say, it's impossible. You're not going to get Joe Pesci to, to play his grandpa. It's not going to happen. And then somehow, it, the stars line up and these things are having you Edie Falco playing his mom, Brad Garrett, you know, it's like Bobby Cannavale, Steve Buscemi, like there's, it's just such an embarrassment of riches and to have such incredible world-class, some of the best actors of all time come together and, and, and show up for Pete to be a part of something that is as absurd at times as this is, is just really astounding to us that it just, uh, I don't know. It just, 
it, it really is surreal. It's hard to it's hard to explain. Like it, you you can't you you can work in this business, but you could never predict that you'll get to work with someone like Joe Pesci. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just uh, it's phenomenal. I, I, it's hard to it's hard to explain. Yeah, it, it, exactly. It's like it is mind blowing to witness. So I'm sure for you to experience it even it's more. Honestly, so. it's like humbling because it's like <laughs> you can't believe that these actors that are so skilled are elevating what you write and, mm -hmm. and doing such magical things with with this show. You mentioned Pete's mom and the dynamic between the two of them is really just like at the heart of the show. I really love it. And then it made, it's led me down a like Instagram spiral. So I was like watching, like looking at his real mom's Instagram. I was like, she seems like literally the sweetest human being on the planet. Yes. So <laughs> how much is she like, do you guys ever run anything by her? Are there any moments that you're like, hmm, I wonder what she's gonna think of that. I, it's interesting because it's not, you know, it's not a documentary. Right, no, of course. And, and this character of Amy, while it, there's like inspiration points from Pete, it's not it's not so specific to real situations between Pete mm -hmm. and his mom that we that we went to her specifically. But that being said, like a lot of the people involved in this show have known and worked with Pete for years. Mm -hmm. And it's like when you are close with Pete, you bec he, you become like family with Pete. So it's like I know Amy, I know Casey, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of us, Dave, who works with Pete is very close with Pete's family as well. So it's like there was a comfort level and a familiarity. But um, but that being said, like, not everything that you're seeing in this show is is a documentary depiction right. of of Amy in real life. And uh, <laughs> and I agree with you. Amy is one of the sweetest uh, people you ever meet. Like, she's, mm -hmm. she's awesome. <laughs> and finally, are you looking to further this collaboration with Pete in the future? Or are you looking to veer away from comedy after this? I love collaborating with Pete. He's This has been one of the most uh, joyful experiences of my career. And, uh, you know, I think that that sense of fun and joyfulness, it comes through in the show. And, I, and I'm mm -hmm. excited for audiences to hopefully have as much fun watching this show and find it as funny as we find it and and have as much fun as we have making it mm -hmm. i love working with pete i would work with pete forever i think he's i think he's one of the greatest it's and i think it's why you're seeing this like laundry list of like unbelievable inconceivable talent show up for him because people that know and work with pete love him yeah that is what it seems like in in your life am i seeing correctly that you are in clone high I am this, in Clone High. What I, can I you tell me about that? Because I'm very excited. I, 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 I'm excited. I love that you love uh, excited. Clone <laughs> High is also coming back uh, <laughs> this season. It's it's a 20 year. I was a. It was the first writing job I ever had was working with Phil Lord and Chris Miller on mm -hmm. Clone High, and uh, and I'm the voice of Scangrade. But I also was one of the OG writers that came back and mm -hmm. helped uh, reboot. But. I'm here to talk about Bupkis. I, I will promote Clone <laughs> High because I'm a, I'm a diehard fan, but I'm I'm mostly here to talk to you about Bupkis. I love that. And you can you can listen to my voice in, in Clone High as as the voice of Scan Green, and then I can listen to your voice through the characters in Bupkis. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice to meet you. <laughs>